So good afternoon and welcome to Touch Math University's Power Hour. Today we're going to talk about how visual and auditory cues support working memory uh, when we're teaching addition and subtraction the Touch Math way. So I am Randy LaRusso and I am um, a trainer with Touch Math. I come with um, almost 45 years at this point experience uh, as a classroom teacher, as a district uh, administrator, and I ran a grant for the Florida Department of Ed. So I have been lucky enough to be, in, be aligned with the uh, National Center and State Collaborative and the TIES Center for inclusion of students with significant cognitive disabilities. So today I want to talk a little bit about why we find math challenging and, and sort of talk about those visual and verbal cues. So math is a very abstract set of information, right, of ideas. And when we have our babies, uh, we tend to put them in our laps and we start reading to them very early on. We are our finger, we're underlining with our finger, we're talking about the picture, we're giving it vocabulary. And so we are starting to sing the ABC song long before our babies and our young children are really prepared for learning to read. But we don't do that with math. So by the time we start to introduce math, we get this series of abstract ideas. It's a whole new symbol system. Um, and for those of you that are not aware, I was not until I started to work with Touch Math. There are 380 math facts that we're asked to memorize as we're coming up in school. 380 math facts. Now, that does not have anything to do with the whole language that is introduced around mathematics, right? Things like dividend, that never came up in the book that we sat and read to our babies, right? So it's this own language. It goes left to right, it goes up and down. It's got one line in some areas and two lines in another. So it is very challenging. So what we need to do is we need to support our students uh, in a way that we can make this all make sense and give them the supports that they need so that they can be successful in math. So when we're using uh, touch points, we are removing the abstraction of these basic number concepts. We're giving our kids a backup system uh, uh, with the visual and verbal prompts that I'm going to share with you today it is a step-by-step -step approach. Um, and we're going to reinforce all the correct rules and procedures through these visual and verbal cues. Before we move forward, I want to take a minute also and talk about how we learn. Because for a long time, we were taking these little quizzes to find out what our learning style was. And, um, you know, in the past years, what we've learned is that we don't have a learning style. We may have a learning preference, but young children learn be when they're playing. And the more our students play, the more they're abs absorbing this information that we're presenting to them. Then the next sense that develops is that visual. The last sense is the auditory. And what we know is on average, typical kids without any kind of disabilities don't fully integrate that auditory network until about sixth grade. Typical kids. 
So as we get older, as things integrate, we may be developing those preferences. Um, and that's how we're learning. I always say I'm a notoric learner. If you want me to memorize something, then I'm going to write it and write it and rewrite it and write it again. And that's how I'm going to learn it. That's my preference. But I am also touching, seeing, hearing. And so all of those things are important as we're moving forward. But one of our most significant issues is that working memory. So what happens to us with that working memory is when it is stressed, it declines. So I always joke about, um, I took my mother to the doctor and we were already late. She's 94. We didn't do it on time. We're late. We're going to a specialist. You know, I've got to get her in there. We get there. And they say to me, did you pre-register? No, no, I didn't. Well, you can do it on your phone. Okay, I'll do, I'll do it on my phone really quick. Where are my glasses? Where I, oh my goodness, I must have dropped them in the, in the parking lot. As the nurse looks at me and says, excuse me, ma'am, they're on your face. Right. That was that stress of that moment that just broke down that working memory. You know, when you're rushing to get out of the house and you can't find your keys and you realize they're in your hand, that's working memory. So how does that all apply into mathematics? Well, if I am a person with dyscalculia. I do not know my facts. I'm never going to know my math facts. But I have supports that I use and have incorporated with Touch Map that have made my work much easier. I can do much more now than I ever did before. But when I was a child in the classroom and I my teacher was teaching something and I was going to be asked to solve a problem, whether for the blackboard or on a paper. My math anxiety, my anxiety that everyone was gonna know that I couldn't do this, that I was the slower than everybody else in getting these math, this math problem done, that I was probably going to get it wrong. That level of anxiety decreases that working memory. And so I cannot listen and understand and take in what my teacher is teaching while my working memory is deteriorating. And so we want to make sure that we give our kids supports so that they are not solely relying on memory to be successful. We want them to have visual and verbal cueing so that they can be successful in solving math problems without having to know all those facts. Look, I'm a proponent. If the kids can learn their facts, absolutely. If we can move them through that and they can get that automaticity, I am 100% there, but what about the kids like me who are not ever going to have that? And so um, let's take a look at some of those things that, that addition brings to the table. When I am looking at my touch points, I have a visual prompt that the touch points give me so that I can count. So when I'm counting my touch points here, I'm counting 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 9 plus 6 is 15. I have used my visual touch points to solve the problem, but I am also repeating that fact as it comes out because I don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater. I want to have them hear that answer to that problem, that fact, as I'm solving it. 
when I am working on moving on counting on, which is our second level of addition, I now have a, a statement that I'm going to use. And I have a process by which I'm going to solve this math problem. So I am working on finding the greater number and counting on. Now, how do I do that? Well, um, I, have a, I have a math number line. And my math number line that I have is going vertical so that I am able to help my students understand that as I'm moving up, as I'm climbing the steps, as I'm going up the elevator, whatever it is, as I am increasing here, my number is greater. My students can find that number with this visual support and count on with the touch points. So I am going to cross this out I am going to say my number. And when I say my number, if you look in the camera right now, you're going to see me. I'm going to say my number. I'm giving them a verbal, a visual that they're going to say it. And then I'm going to count forward. So here's what it looks like. I have 9, 10, 11, 12. 9 plus 3 is 12. So I have my verbal, I have my statement that tells me, find my greatest number, say its name and continue to count on. I have my visual here with my touch points. And then what do I say at the end? I say nine plus three is 12 because I'm giving everybody an opportunity to solve the problem. As I'm moving forward, and I go to the third level of math, of addition. I am now doing addition without regrouping. And addition without regrouping is nothing more than what we just did on counting on. But it's giving me a visual prompt. And this visual prompt here is an arrow. And that arrow is going to show up in addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And what it does for me is it tells me this is where you start. This is where I'm going to, to start adding. What I have seen in the classroom is students who use their visual prompts will either continue to need them, and they may even stop before they do a, a, a sheet of, of facts and our problems, and they will put their own arrow in. Uh, they may put their own points in. They may use a pencil tip to tap, or they may not need it at all after a time. So when I need it, it's there for me. I have my arrow. I find my greatest number. I say five, six, seven, eight. Three plus five is eight. Four, five, six. Four plus two is six. My answer is 68. So, and it does not matter how far out I go. I can go into the millions. If I'm not regrouping, these are my visual prompts that I have. Now, for me, at this point in my life, I can look at it, I can visualize it, and I can use it. And in the last two years of working with such math, I, for the first time in my life, am able to do these kinds of problems in my head. So it is a progress. It is not like once we start this process, we need it for the rest of our lives, but we have those supports. As I move forward, I get into regrouping. I have another visual prompt here. I have my auditory. I must regroup if my answer is greater than nine. And what shows back up here is that arrow. Here's where I'm going again. I also have, if you'll notice, these dots, right? These separate, my columns. 
And my columns really support me, especially in this kind of a number, because uh, one of the things we're very strong about in touch math is making sure that we always write the number the correct way. So for example, I start with my arrow, I find my greatest number. Maybe I don't need this anymore, maybe I do. My number line. So I'm going to have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15 is written like this. And so I am always going to write my one and then my five, because that's how you write 15. Now I come back over, I say five, six, seven, eight. My answer is 85. This visual here lets me know again that there's a space for me to do that correctly. So if I'm doing it and I'm regrouping in the middle of my number, I have my arrow. I start with my 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I write my 1 and then my 5 because we always want to see it the right way. 3, 4, 5. And when I'm coming here, I have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. This space allows me to write my one first and then my four. So my answer is 1,455. So that's how we're looking at uh, those addition support as we learn our touch math. Now, when we get into subtraction, we again have these touch points if we need them. We again have that arrow that helps us know where to begin if we need it, right? And now instead of a box, I'm going to have a bar and that bar is going to help me understand when I need to regroup. So let's do a quick one on this. In here, I am doing backward counting. Backward counting is another one of our, pow our, our power hour uh, presentations. If you have not yet seen that, um, you'll be able to get to, to see that one as well. But I'm going to show you that I am backwards counting. If I cannot count all of the touch points, I must regroup. There's my auditory. Here's my visual. Here's my visual. So I'm going four and I'm backwards counting on the dots. Three, two, one. Oh no, can I use all my dots? I cannot. So I need to cross out my seven and take one away and make it a six. When I take that 10 to add it here, I am using a full 14 because this little ticky thing with a 14 is not a 14. It's a little ticky thing. We want to give them that whole number as that visual. Now I can count backwards on my dots, on my, on my pitch points, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six. 14 minus eight is six, six, five, four, six minus two is four. My answer is 46. So those are our visual prompts. As we move forward, as we're working on things, I've seen students put together their own visual prompts. Um, as they're learning, as they are moving forward. So that is our uh, quick and dirty presentation on the importance, why it's so important that we have these visual um, and auditory prompts for students.